The year is 1059. The Almoravids are knocking at the doors of the infamous kingdom of Burawada. The battle breaks out. Talab Yassin, their spiritual leader, suffers heavy injuries. As he is carried back to his war camp, he calls on the senior members of the Almoravids and utters what would be his last words. O Almoravidin, do not despair or lose hope. Help one another on the truth and in the sake of Allah. Do not fight or compete for leadership, for Allah grants dominion to whom he wills. So choose my successor from whom you are pleased, one that will lead your armies, fight your enemies, and fulfill the Islamic obligations. Let us go back in time. 1051. The Almoravids have set their base in the Sanhaja tribe, where they managed to pacify the desert sub-tribes of Lamtuna and Gudala. Abdullah ibn Yassin chooses Yahya ibn Umar, a member of the Banu Tarhut, as successor of Yahya ibn Ibrahim, who died in circumstances that are still to this day unclear to historians. In a rapid succession of events, the Moroccan tribes fall into al Muravid rule one after the other. In 1053, they take control of the desert city of Audaghost. In 1054, scholars from Sijil Massa send a call for help to Abdullah ibn Yassin to rid them from their unjust rulers. The call is answered on the same year as the Almoravids sweep in and take over the area. In 1055, the Mahrawa region is next on the line. However, things are about to take a turn for the worse. A group of rebels break out in Gudala and Sijil Massa. Yahya ibn Omar and Abdullah ibn Yassin are forced to split their troops. As a result, Yahya ibn Omar is killed in 1056 in the Battle of Tabfarilla, which is arguably the first significant defeat of the Almoravids. Abdullah ibn Yassin appoints then Yahya's brother Abu Bakr ibn Omar as successor. Abu Bakr launches a campaign to pacify the last rebellions in the Sahara Desert. By now, they have managed to control most of the unrest across Morocco, but are still faced with a significant challenge, the kingdom of Burawada. To give some context, we have to go further back in time. In 744 CE, during the caliphate of Hisham ibn Abd al-Malik, a self-professed prophet of a new Judeo-Christian religion by the name of Salih ibn Tarif starts to spread his newfound religion in the region of Tamasna. According to Ibn Khaldun, Salih ibn Tarif claimed to have received a new revelation from God containing 80 chapters, from which some were named after famous prophets like Adam and Noah. In his religion, his followers would fast the months of Rajab instead of Ramadan, they would pray 10 daily prayers instead of the required 5, and they would have no restrictions on the amount of spouses they could take on, while Islam limits it to 4. His grandson, Yunus ibn Ilyas ibn Saleh, took over the torch and carried out this new religion forcefully, even killing over 7,000 people for not adhering to it. Abdullah ibn Yassin and the Almoravids, having rallied the rest of the country, could now shift their attention and focus towards this region. The Burahwatas boasted a very powerful military force of over 20,000 men. For a long period of time, they managed to thwart any attempt at taking their lands. They were also ruled by a succession of strong leaders who saw to the prosperity of the kingdom. And none of them were interested in military conquest. Instead, they preferred strengthening trade and diplomacy. They also consolidated all the tribes within the kingdom, enabling a long period of peace within their lands. In 1059, they finally head out towards Burawata with a strong religious zeal determined to eradicate from Morocco any trace of this blasphemous religion. And this is when Abdullah ibn Yassin dies from his wounds, while his companions carry on the battle and manage to win it. Abdullah ibn Yassin truly was a remarkable character. From the lowest point of his career as a pariah kicked out from the Saharan tribes, to its peak as the leader of a vast empire, he remained steadfast throughout his life. The bigger the responsibilities, the more humility and khushu, or fear, towards Allah he took on. His leadership, teachings and manners gave birth to a whole new generation of al scholar-warriors that would carry on his mission to completion. 
And this is especially important as we start talking about the life of the next two leaders, Abu Bakr ibn Umar and Yusuf ibn Tashfin, who would carry the banner of the Almoravids as the most successful empire of its time.